Welcome back to Design Santa Barbara. This week we are highlighting two of the greatest homes in the United States. Our next home profile will be the state of America's third president, Thomas Jefferson. In 1768, a 25-year-old Thomas Jefferson began work on his first estate, choosing to call it Monticello. Built on a plantation of 5,000 acres, the first attempt at a manor home took 14 years and was abandoned when Jefferson's wife unexpectedly passed away at the age of 33. In 1784, Jefferson was named Minister to France on behalf of the United States and the property was left vacant. During his several years in Europe, he had an opportunity to see some of the classical buildings with which he had become acquainted from his reading, as well as to discover the modern trends in French architecture that were then fashionable in Paris. His decision to remodel his own home may date from this period. In 1794, following his service as the first U.S. Secretary of State, Jefferson began rebuilding his house based on the ideas he had acquired in Europe. The remodeling continued throughout most of his presidency. Although generally completed by 1809, Jefferson continued work on the present structure until his death in 1826. Jefferson added a center hallway and a parallel set of rooms to the structure, more than doubling its area. He remodeled the second floor full height story from the original house and replaced it with a mezzanine bedroom floor. The interior is centered on two large rooms, which served as an entrance hall museum where Jefferson displayed his scientific interests and a music sitting room. The most dramatic element of the new design was an octagonal dome, which he placed above the west front of the building in place of a second-story portico. The room inside the dome was described by a visitor as a noble and beautiful apartment, but it was rarely used, perhaps because it was hot in summer and cold in winter, or because it could only be reached by climbing a steep and very narrow flight of stairs. The dome room has now been restored to its appearance during Jefferson's lifetime, with Mars yellow walls and a painted green and black checkered floor. Summertime temperatures are high in the region, with indoor temperatures of around 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Jefferson himself is known to have been interested in Roman and Renaissance texts about ancient temperature control techniques, such as a ground cooled air and heated floors. Monticello's large central hall and aligned windows were designed to allow a cooling air current to pass through the house. And the octagonal cupola draws hot air up and out. Built before the time of refrigeration, Monticello maintained a small man-made lake with fish that could be caught and served for dinner guests. The state features its own cemetery, where Jefferson himself is buried. After his death, the estate fell into disrepair and was sold by his eldest daughter to James Turner Barclay, a local apothecary. Barclay sold it in 1834 to Uriah P. Levy, the first Jewish Commodore in the United States Navy, a fifth-generation American whose family first settled in Savannah, Georgia. Levy greatly admired Jefferson and used his private funds to repair, restore, and preserve the house. The Confederate government seized the house as enemy property at the outset of American Civil War and sold it to Confederate officer Benjamin Franklin Ficklin. Levy's estate recovered the property after the war. Levy's heirs argued over his estate, but their lawsuits were settled in 1879 when Uriah Levy's nephew, Jefferson Monroe Levy, a prominent New York lawyer, real estate, and a stock a speculator and later member of Congress bought out the other heirs for $10,050 and took control of Monticello. Like his uncle, Jefferson Levy commissioned repairs, restoration, and preservation of the grounds and house, which had been deteriorating seriously 
while the lawsuits wound their way through the courts in New York and Virginia. Together, the Levies preserved Monticello for nearly 100 years. In 1923, a private nonprofit organization, the Thomas Jefferson Foundation, purchased the house from Jefferson Levy. The foundation operates Monticello and its grounds as a house, museum, and educational institution. Visitors can wander the grounds as well as tour rooms in the cellar and ground floor. Monticello is a national historic landmark. It is the only private home in the United States to be designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Included in that designation are the original grounds and buildings of Jefferson's University of Virginia. From 1989 to 1992, a team of architects from the Historic American Buildings Survey of the United States created a collection of measured drawings of Monticello. These drawings are held by the Library of Congress. The design of Monticello is a key element in what is today known as Jeffersonian architecture. I hope you have enjoyed this look into the two most fascinating homes in America. Throughout this season, we will be profiling more from around the world. Stay tuned. We will have more right after this break.